All right, today we have Jinx, who is a fan of Japanese music, like ourselves over here on this channel. That's what we talk about a lot here. And um, yeah, we ended. I ended up running into your Instagram because of a baby metal post, and then somebody said they recognized you in the post. And I was like, oh, let me check this out. And I saw that you did cosplay, checked out your bands that you listened to. I saw Acme on there, Last Rock Stars, Miyavi, Baby Metal, Bandmate. I'm like, oh, wow, I got to have you on and have have a chat about Japanese music. So since you've been to quite a bit of them, so welcome to the channel, Jinx. Um, that's what you want to be referred to as, right, Jinx? Yes, yeah. that is okay. my <laughs> Okay, good, good. And if you guys are curious, too, she does have a uh discord over here there you have instagram showing off some of the cosplay and stuff and all of these concerts that you've been to um tell everyone a little bit about yourself how you got into japanese music you know tell us what you do yeah so oh my god i feel like the lore goes so far back with japanese music um yeah how did that all recently, start <laughs> recently it's gotten really popular online for sure but like i grew up like watching naruto on like cartoon network okay <laughs> and, like yeah. it literally stemmed from that mm -hmm. like i was elementary school i recorded my phone ringtone from when naruto was airing i recorded blooper blooper the op as my ringtone okay and, like it was just like a spiral from there because i was already super heavy into anime in middle school and then i was already listening to this is such a weird like timeline of music because I listen to a lot of music, but yeah. I was into anime already. And then my friend got me into K-pop in sixth grade. Okay. So then I just ended up kind of in that region already. Mm -hmm. And then I got into a lot of Korean rock bands at the same time that I was getting into whoever was singing anime openings. Oh, okay. So it just kind of like came together like that. And then time skip a few years i'm like a freshman in high school and mm. i'm super emo you know yeah. all i listen to is like the the usual like metalcore bands like you know like motionless and white pierce the veil all that okay <laughs> and yep. then i end up finding a parallel between those bands in japan mm. and i'm like yeah. oh this is even better <laughs> i was like oh yeah. this is the music i already listened to yeah in a language that i also coincidentally i'm learning yeah uh, so it all just kind of came together like that and i've just been listening to all kinds of genres of music really for a long time but i have always stuck with the more like alternative metalcore sound yes and, like and like acme up, <laughs> yes like yeah. acme acme is yeah. the perfect example <laughs> yeah. of like the metalcore sound that i was like a huge fan of especially in like my like really emo days like early high school um and that's like the exact sound that I was looking for. Like, gotcha. <laughs> just hearing them was exactly the music I already was a fan of. But for some reason, I'm not gonna say it's better because it's in Japanese. I just enjoy a lot of Japanese musicians because I feel like their like vocal style is really different from American bands. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it helps, but I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. No, I I, I get what you're saying. Like, and there's a lot lot more uniqueness to the Japanese metalcore scene in my opinion like Hanabi is a great example of that very metalcore influence but they bring in some of this other stuff like more of the dance beats also in there and I like the mixture of metalcore so I completely understand you there's another band I'm a huge fan of like one of my favorites Maximum the Hormone um, that because of the progressive metal I absolutely love them this is probably my favorite out of all the, all the Japanese like metal style bands um, it's definitely that that's the one I gravitate towards the most. I know for Maximum the Hormone, it's so funny. My dad actually asked me if I listened to them because he <laughs> came across one of their oh, songs God. somehow. <laughs> uh like he like called me up in the middle of the day and he was like, I was I was I ran to some guy in public and I was wearing um I was wearing that shirt you bought me from that concert. I forget what band it was, but I, I buy my yeah. t shirts from go to. Um and he was like Hey, if you know that band, have you heard of Maximum the Hormone? And he's like, he was like, I don't know, but I'll ask my kid, I guess. Yeah. So he called me. He's like, have you heard of this band? I was like, where did you hear that? Like, how did you possibly come across that band out of everything? Because I know them from the the Death Note OP they did. Yeah, and that's but how. It, I 
that's how I discovered him was through that also. It was the Death Note. Um, my friend, that's how we started our channel, actually. He was like, hey, we were doing an anime channel at first, and it was him and I arguing about watching anime or whatnot, because I never had watched anime. He did, he grew up with it like yourself he he watched it since he was young and i was like to me i was like "Eh, i don't know i don't know about this so we're like oh let's do a thing where he convinced me to like anime and that was the channel idea but then we realized it kind of was like meh and we're like i but i something that i took away from it i was i really loved the music so that's how it all started i was like who's doing this in death note and then he showed me attack on titan i checked out the musicians to that and that's how I got into the music was because of anime. I just absolutely love the music so much. And then that's how the whole channel started. That art my main channel, Dicodic. So that's how the okay. and then well Death Note's a good place to start because I feel like those openings are just super iconic. You know what's funny is a lot of people I know they don't like them because they don't actually like that style of music. They're like, why is this uh, in anime? It's an anime opening. Meanwhile, I'm like the the first opening, The World by Nightmare, mm-hmm. is like one of my favorite anime OPs ever because I just love Nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very into like the VK bands more than like yeah. just like the like rock bands. I'm very into the, the whole aesthetic and the whole That's something I love about yeah. <laughs> because it's visual K with but not full on. Because there's like visual K, this is how I consider it. It has a specific vocal style. But my favorite out of the genre, I would say, would be like Darren Gray and Acme. Love Darren Gray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those would be the ones that I would be more into because they they veer away. Because to me, I always say Japan's VK bands are kind of like the power metal bands of the U.S. But I really like the visual K bands that really change up the style of music underneath it. So it doesn't sound like power metal, you know? The, I always use the goth comparison for VK bands because I think more of like um, like Bucktick, where it's very like if you introduce someone to Bucktick, you could be like, you've heard of The Cure. Uh, Here's Japan's yeah. version. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I guess. That's usually because yeah. Whenever I tried to explain VK to people, like like my like old coworkers, they'd be like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "Okay, so it's like what vampires will listen yeah. to, but like in like really cool outfits, but at the same time." <laughs> VK itself is not a music genre. It's just the look. Yeah. Um, so it can be anything. I know a lot of the really popular ones, of course, are like the like symphonic metal style, like Malice Miser and yes. like Versailles. Um, yes. That's why I always thought power metal. That's why I always thought power metal for some reason, because of the vocal style. Because if you listen to power metal bands in the U.S., it's very like, it's clean vocals, straight up clean. And I yeah. thought it was interesting that, Japanese people sing in that tone. You don't really hear that anywhere else. It's like a very specific vocal sound. No matter what the music is, they always have the specific sound. Yeah. Voice. So that's what you gravitate towards. Like, is that sound? Yeah. yeah. And I, I love all the weird ones. And Acme is one of those for me. Because like, I am a huge metalcore fan. You know, I, I grew up with like Avenged Sevenfold, All That Remains, yeah. like the earlier, earlier days. Before... The bands you mentioned came out, which is kind of ironic because my buddy Eric, who does the channel with me, he's fr- he's fans of all those bands. I'm like the era right before it. <laughs> yeah, those are ones I'm like familiar with, but like I wasn't heavy into like because they weren't as like current and like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you just saw Acme, which I'm very jealous of. I did not go see them and I should have. And I hope they come back here very soon. Do they come here a lot? They do, but it's usually like they don't go to a ton of cities. Yeah, um, but like they work shows, right? with um, a promoter called Fake Star that brings a lot of Japanese talent to America. Um, they're kind of a a growing promotion company, but I have some friends that work for them, and all the shows I've been to have been incredible that they have put on. Um, and they bring a lot of artists that don't really come here otherwise. Like they just brought Juluka. To Atlanta, like they're Luka. the people that did that. I love which Luka. I'm hoping means we're getting a Juluka tour next year, so I can go see them. <laughs> um, because I, oh my god, I would love to go see Juluka. That's the first time they've ever come to America, so I was really disappointed I couldn't go, but I could not go to Atlanta that weekend, unfortunately. I uh, see. I just discovered them recently. They, I am going to see them 
and I'm going to be in that pit <laughs> immediately. I love Jaluka. There, I can't get the other guys on the channel into him. It's it's too heavy for him, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. They're so cool. My friend that flew out for the show brought me back some Czechy, um, since I couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. um but them and acme the fandoms have a lot of like overlap so i think mm -hmm. facer made a good decision with bringing them but acme in particular i saw them twice this year um but they've wow. they've been to la a couple times wow um but i saw them in april for the first time mm -hmm. um in k-town somewhere somewhere downtown yeah. um and at the time, I only, I wasn't like heavy into them, but I was, I'm very like, if I know a couple songs and I like the style, I'm absolutely going to take the opportunity to go to the concert. I mean, tickets, what, 20 bucks? Like, it'll be a fun time regardless. I just like being at concerts. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and then having the live experience was just like, oh my God, this is one of my favorite bands ever now. Like, I think they were like my number three artists on spotify this year like i got so heavy into their music um because not only was like the show amazing like they were great performers even though the place that i saw them at the first time the stage was so tiny it was like a foot off the ground i was about six inches from chisa the main singer yeah wow um, i like got smacked in the face with the mic cord like i was right there <laughs> like my, uh added to the experience in my opinion yeah uh but like with the tiny little stage they had like they put on such a show the sound quality was terrible but i could still hear how good the vocals were <laughs> yeah um yeah. so i was so excited when they came back just last month um and i got to see them in a venue that had proper sound equipment mm -hmm. and like it was just it was amazing like it was already good the first time but like now it's amazing and i get to see all the members and not just she's like being, yeah. being six inches from my face um and in addition to the concert itself actually my friend put on like a fan event for them they did a cup sleeve event at like a yeah. cafe oh. um two days before the concert um and the band themselves came and it was just like hang out with the band take photos with them play games with them oh that's cool hang out. and it's like you know, I feel like, I don't know if it's just my experience with American bands, but American bands don't do that. They don't just, like, hang out with their fans. Yeah. It's like, true. And it's not just Acme who does that. Like, band-made fans, I mean, the band doesn't go there with them. But what I've noticed is, like, the fandoms for all these bands, like, band-made, baby metal, uh, Acme. I didn't even realize that Acme had fans that were like that. That so that's really cool to hear that it's not just with Bay Metal and Bandmates. So we're hearing for Acme. Sim. Sim is one of my favorite Japanese bands. Sim, I think, might be the best concert I've ever been to. Yeah. I know I'm jumping ahead, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, real the quick. Sim concert. I agree. <laughs> insane. Yep. Oh my god. I unfortunately didn't have VIP for that, so I didn't get to meet them, but. Uh, they didn't do the meetups anyways. Even if you got VIP, it was only with the band that they're headlining with. I don't know if the newer ones are doing it. The newer concert. Maybe. Oh, I know. I went to I went to their tour when they were headlining last uh, last year. Oh, not with oh okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just. Oh, they didn't even tour. Sorry, they just did an LA show. Yeah, I'm spoiled. <laughs> I get the like bands that come for like one off things. <laughs> I love Sim. Sim's so good. It's that's right. That show... that is the genre I love. Oh my god. Like that show is so far up there with like probably the best show I've ever been to. I was making a list this morning of all the bands that I've seen because I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I'm glad <laughs> you're saying that because nobody believes me. Like I've seen Bandmate a lot and I absolutely love them, but Sims concert and like the way that they perform live just like blew every other band out of the water water when it came to live performance. Maybe other, maybe Baby Metal would be tied with them. Baby Metal was insane too. The but the way that Ma from Sim like interacts with the crowd, and I love that I treat. He's so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it, it, like in uh, I saw him in Vegas, and he pretty much was telling us that we're all like, he's like, I thought this was America. What's up with this weak crowd or whatever? Because everyone wasn't wasn't being loud enough. It was hilarious. And uh, he's so cool. And he was like, but like everybody had the to show. Sorry, God. <laughs> it's funny because he's like saying arigatou, like thank you, but he's like telling everybody it means fuck you. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> it was it was pretty funny. But anyways, go ahead. Because I know that show 
there was a VIP package, but I think it sold out before I bought my ticket. Um, Cause I know that there was people there that like had already bought merch and had photos with them that were like at the front, obviously. Um, and I showed up like five minutes before doors. So I was not doing all that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but well, that, I know that they're just cool people though. Yeah. You can tell, you can, you can tell they are, but that's anyways, back to the Acme thing though. It's just awesome. Right. That there's other bands that, that do this kind of thing. And this is the first time I heard about the band actually like hanging out with the fans. That's really cool. Yeah. And like my friend, we actually met at the concert in April and she's someone that like Acme is her absolute favorite band. So she travels to all their America shows if she can. Mm -hmm. um, but, but like they'll do events pretty similar to how VK bands do events in Japan where they, they had like a birthday party event for like the members birthdays and like fans could just buy a ticket for whatever it was like 15 wow. bucks and then come hang out for their birthday. Wow. Um, which they did in Minneapolis, I think this year. Okay. It was like a week or two before the show I went to. Um, and she was telling me about it when I met her at the show. Um, Oh, I also kind of sidetracked, but I go to almost all these shows by myself because I love just like meeting people there. And then I end up with at least five new friends at every single show I go to. So I have like such a cool community of like other like J music fans. Yeah. And then I end up seeing them at other shows. And then we're like, oh, are you going to the show? Oh, let me send you the link from the tickets drop for this. Like so cool. So many of like the fans of the bands that I'm a fan of are just like some of the coolest people I've met. Yeah. Just that's, in general. <laughs> that's what I've noticed too. Like we definitely with doing this guys you guys podcast where we were like it's insane how many people we've met in line or that have seen our channels because uh for our, us it's four reactors that got together and we do this podcast and talk about j-rock and j-metal and yes. and what we've been doing lately is bringing on people like yourself like to just to bring all these communities that are out there into one you know because we're all probably going to run into each other at these shows. And it's really cool to like meet up with the people and talk about the music that other people like, because my initial like friends that I have aren't into this music. So it was really cool to have, you know, other people that listen to it also and talk about these bands and how amazing they are really good musicianship. Like it's not like mediocre musicianship or anything. <laughs> like this is like really top notch uh, playing and stuff from these bands. And I like how they're creating this uh, culture of when you go to a show, you have more of a reason to go. It's not just like you go by yourself and it's weird, you know, but like before you have to like try to bring a friend, friend along, try to force them to like the music. I feel like with these shows, more people are open to talking, if that makes sense. If compared yeah. to if I go to like, for instance, I went to see Avenged Sevenfold and I went with someone, but there was no like intermingling, you know, maybe now there will be, I don't know. Maybe things are changing. Oh, man. I, th I think it's a little bit different generationally as well because mm. I don't know I feel like for for me well I'm just a very like extroverted person like I have no problem going places and just chatting with anyone that's uh. part of the reason I have so many friends like from like every community I've been a part of whether it's been k-pop or cosplay just anime in general j music like i will go anywhere and make a friend like it's easy for me but i don't see a lot of that with people that are older than me yeah. um, oh, okay like when i say older than me i mean like like mid 30s mm. not like not like super that. super old but i'm also not super <laughs> young i'm 24 so like um like, I will go and just find anyone that looks remotely close to my age or looks like they, I don't know, might be nice. I don't really, <laughs> I don't, I don't really know how I choose. Have you met I know when I went nice? saw, Have you ever done that and they weren't nice? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I think I've had pretty good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. I think, you know, cool people find other cool people. So I'm <laughs> like. You can kind of just like scope out the vibes regardless. Yes. And like they don't even have to be the people standing in line with me. Like I, when I saw Burnout Syndrome last year, mm -hmm. I walked in, got in line for my little VIP thing, got my photo with the band and whatever. And then there was kind of like a, 
a waiting around for the show to start while people were still getting their VIP photos. Mm -hmm. And I saw a girl standing in like the middle of like the open floor by herself, like looking at her phone. And I was like, I'm just go talk to her. So I just walked straight up to her and I was like, I was like, do you know if we just start lining up like in front of the, the stage or if we have to go back out? And she's like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, oh, are you all here for harassing them? She was like, yeah. And I was like, cool. Do you think they'll sign our badges if we just ask them? And she was like, I don't know. And I was like, cool, come with me. I'll ask. <laughs> and then we went and got our VIP badges signed by the band. And then we, I pulled her up to barricade with me because I walked through all the other fans. And then she d drove me to McDonald's afterwards. And <laughs> then we went to like four more shows for other bands in the past year together. That's so awesome. like, it's really easier for me. Um, and I feel like it's more fun than just going to shows with the same person all the time. Yeah. And just like, you find other people. You already have a common interest. You're at the same show. Exactly. Yeah. One of my highlighted uh, shows of the year was going to see Bandmate in Minneapolis because we did our first live podcast there. And that was just awesome. Just like all the fans of one space. And we were just talking about J-Rock in front of everybody. And just having that that interaction was a blast. I, I, I look forward to doing that again. It was so, so fun doing live podcasts like in front of a bunch of people and then having those people to chat with afterwards, you know, after you're done doing the live podcast and just like chatting with all the fans that are there for the band. It was, it was amazing. And uh, yeah, I think people are just starting to open up, man. I like in all, you know, categories in all ages, I feel like, I think people are just like sick of uh, like not having friends that are in the same space, you know, and they're just like, we got to get out, you know, and go there and see them. Yeah. Um, and it's cool that people are willing to talk and open up. And the coolest thing is just hearing about how like it's changed your life and stuff. And I'm like, that's awesome to hear bands. So with your cosplay stuff, do you do this every time you go out to a concert? Um, so cosplay is like, it's, it's a casual hobby for me, but somehow it's also a huge part of my personality. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You like doing it. Like, thing that you love doing. It's so, it's so fun. And it's like something that like I've always wanted to do, like when I like got into anime in like middle school. Um, but like, yeah, it's one of those things that just like, it, it takes a lot of effort and money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So like, it, it is a lot of work. Um, and I only really, got more into it like last year no i feel i think the first time i like properly cosplayed was like 2021 i went to sack anime with some friends but even that like wasn't even for anime mm -hmm. uh we went <laughs> because we're, go we're going through another arc again i uh was invited to compete as a k-pop dancer <laughs> at the convention oh wow uh we lived a lot of lives <laughs> <laughs> um so I was like, sure, why not? Because I had already, I had already, he asked me to like fill in for when they have extra spots because I used to do performances for him already. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't really do the, the K-pop dance thing anymore because I'm lazy and I don't like K-pop as much anymore. Yeah. Um, I still enjoy K-pop, but I don't really like new K-pop. I don't really like the sound that a lot of it has become, mm. but like, like 2012 to like 2017, like that era of K-pop was huge part of my life. I think I've seen probably like 25 K-pop bands live. Like I have seen so many more K-pop bands than I have alternative bands. Oh, wow. Mostly because of just because of opportunity, but. Um, they play a lot in LA, right? Oh yeah. Any band that is going on a US tour is coming to LA. So like I've had so many opportunities to see bands. Um, but when I was like, old enough and had my own money and was allowed to go to concerts um was when i was really heavy into my like k-pop fan phase mm -hmm. so those were most of the bands that i went and saw because like when when all the emo bands i wanted to see were playing shows when i was in high school my parents didn't want me to go <laughs> so yeah i just kind of like missed that like opportunity to go see all those bands that i was a fan of but gotcha um yeah so i I went to SAC Anime uh, and I was there for a K-pop thing. Um, uh, but since I was already going, I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll bring something to cosplay. Mm -hmm. um, and someone, 
there's there's lore here, but someone had basically bought me a costume uh -huh. um, and was like, and was like, you should get into cosplay here. Mm, okay. And I was like, sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, I went and did that, and then I was like, oh, anime conventions are kind of fun. I kind of forgot because um, I'd been to a handful of them, but I wasn't like really heavy into them. Uh, but then last year I went to a couple more and like I did like all four days of anime expo last year for the first time, like cosplaying all four days and like was like really getting into the whole experience. And then I was like, oh no, this is really fun. Now I have to like invest more time and money into it. Yeah. <laughs> from and what, from what I heard, it could cost like thousands, like on certain outfits and stuff, depending on what you do. Right. Definitely. If you're doing like super custom yeah situations um a lot of mine is more casual i like to do more like uh what we call closet cosplay which is like you find stuff that like uh it gives you the vision of the character even if it's not their exact costume um because yeah. i thought that was way more fun than just like buying the pre-made outfits because i just like styling clothes yeah uh, so that's kind of how i started I don't have a ton of like super canon outfits or anything. Um, I was like, you know what? I get a handful of wigs. I can do anything. Yeah. I always, <laughs> I always thought it was fascinating because my friend Vicky, she hand makes all of it. She just, she knows how to sew and she does yeah. all the customizations to it. She's really good at it. And I'm like, how? so she saves a lot of money that way. That's what she does. She like gets a bunch of material. And I'm like, how do you have the video? That can be equally or more expensive, depending on what you're making. True, true. Yeah. She's, uh, we've done a couple, we've done Attack on Titan together. We've done co covers and stuff. She's, and she helped us with our cosplay and stuff for that, for those, uh, music videos. So we've done, we've done quite a bit. She helped me with my band made one too. That was, that was crazy. We all dressed up as maids and did a video. Uh, <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> I okay. If I hadn't seen Bandmade when they were opening for someone, I definitely would have worn my maid fit, but I could not justify it for the headliner. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, who was uh, who was the headliner that you're going to see? They opened for the last rock stars, actually. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So that's how you discovered Bandmade was because of the last rock stars. No, I heard of them from a coworker at my job five years ago uh -huh. with no context. He was like, you should listen to this band. He had no idea what kind of music I liked. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, there's a band called Band Made, and they're just like Japanese rock band that, that are dressed as maids. You love them. And I'm like, why would I love them? You don't know anything about me. And he was like, just <laughs> listen to them. <laughs> I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. Uh, that's literally how that happened. What did you and think then I just, you like, first heard them? What, what what did you think when you did fear, first hear him or actually how i was like i was like oh they're cool oh uh, like <laughs> okay i heard him and i was like it's it's nothing really special for me mm -hmm. um but then a couple couple years later they popped up on one of my um i'll just like let spotify like play its radio stuff and like suggest things to me yeah and a couple songs in there there was a few bandmate songs in there and i was like i was like oh this is what they're doing now i like this Oh, I wonder. Um, if it was, I wonder if it was like newer. I have a feeling it might be newer songs because I got into them because of their newer stuff. Because it was more like metal, it had more like of a technical, like it's very like very riffage. I know the song. I'm pretty sure the first song that I saved from them was "Sense." Ah, okay, yeah, that's a great song. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, okay, there's there's something I can see here. There, I'm working with something here. Yeah. Um, because I remember when I heard them, when my coworker showed them to me, I was like. It's fine. Yeah. He probably showed you older stuff. So what sold me on the band, I'm going to assume that we're kind of similar taste since we both like metalcore. If you're going to yeah. see anything by them, Unseen World, give that album a chance. Uh, just listen to it one time. And uh, there's songs like Black Hole and there's some really heavy songs God on there. And it's very, it's it has a lot of metal influence, but their core sound is hard rock. So I think that's probably what you heard in the beginning. And coming from- yeah. I mean, from the metal because this back. was like 2018. Ah, okay, probably. Yeah, that was like it was. About. It was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, but bandmade. If if I was going to just a bandmade show, absolutely would have dressed the part for it. <laughs> so when you saw them live, your first time seeing them live was at the Last Rock Stars. 
Yeah, that's the only time I've gotten to see them. Um, and I was so happy because they added them as an opener super last minute. Yeah. Like that wasn't even like a really planned thing. And I was like, this is so lucky. I was like, <laughs> okay, sure. Why not? What was yeah, your band made? What'd you think though when you saw them live? Oh, they were great. Yeah. They're great. Um, I know they didn't, they had some technical difficulties during their set. I know. Um, Konami's car, is car went out. I believe is it Sua, I think. I think there's one called Sua. Uh, Konami, I think it was that her guitar went out. I believe. Yeah. That one, yeah. Someone's whoever the guitarist that also sings, her mic went out during oh. like two of their songs. Oh, Miku, Miku's. Uh, one. Miku. Oh yeah. my god, what band am I think? Who is Sua? I, I'm just I making people up. I don't know. I was like, maybe she means <laughs> Psyche, the singer, but um. But yeah, I don't know. No, it's a K-pop idol. That's K-pop what it is. <laughs> Do is K-pop idol. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm like, what am I thinking of? I'm like combining so many people in my brain right now. I was Sua. I do it all the time. I'm telling you. I Who knows who names. else? I mix up names all the time, especially with all the all the bands I react to, like remembering all their names. It's, it's a lot. Names are whatever. Is- who cares if you know <laughs> My theory is as long as you know the band name, that's all that matters to me. But and then you listen to yeah. music, like oh, it doesn't matter at that point. Especially if you, yeah. like you said before we started, we listen to a lot of music, so it's really hard. Unless you're like a super fan, I'm sure like Acme, you know all their names. I think we were talking about yeah. Last Rock because Acme is a group that like I I've met them and like talked to all of them, like just as people. Yeah. You should probably so, like because like at the show even. Like when I when I went up to the band after the show, um, I had like she says Checky the Polaroid, um, the I had the singer's Polaroid from the show, and I asked him if he could sign it for me, and he was like, "Yeah, of course." Jinx with a Y, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I know them as people. Like it feels like. So. That's awesome. I really hope that was. Do some- I thought I was delusional when he said that, though. I was like, "Huh? <laughs> what do you mean?" <laughs> yeah you're like you remembered me <laughs> like uh, right that's what i've been, I've been so like, it's a weird feeling but like also very cool <laughs> very cool i really hope i don't has that band came out with music recently or acne yeah or the, it's been um they had a single recently no new album in a little bit uh i don't remember the english name for their new song though i don't know if it has one yeah or I, most recent song um uh, I forgot who recommended them to us, but somebody recommended it to us and we were just like, absolutely loved it. I, well, I always called them the band with the orange because they have uh, they have like uh, this video, like a, it looks like an orange scene or something like that. I'm pretty sure I got the their, I think their most famous song would be Rotten Orange. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> I always remember them because of that. Every time I think of Acme, I think of orange every time. That's fair. Yeah. Ron Orange is a really good song and I eat it up every single time I see it live. <laughs> I never want it off the set list. I gotta listen to more of them to be honest. I, I've been obsessed with Jaluka, like you were mentioning earlier. That they're definitely like up there. I love Acme, but Jaluka just has all the heavy for me. <laughs> that I, that I... Yeah, Jaluka's definitely heavier than Acme because Acme goes a little bit more uh they have well, they have like two ballads. Yeah. I don't know ever done a ballad i don't i don't know either i mean they have a song called overkill and it's like the most obnoxious <laughs> loudest song i've ever heard in my life but go- i love loud noise music like <laughs> it's just yeah. fun to listen to yeah but like acme has a little bit more um some calmer songs a little bit more clean vocal focus like there's songs with no screaming whatsoever um uh, I'll listen to more after this podcast. I definitely should. It's one of those bands that checked out songs and my buddy Eric and I, we loved all of them that we heard. We just never made it back, you know, and I really regret not doing that. Well, their their most recent song was actually a bit heavier than um, most of their previous stuff. Yeah. I really liked it. And it was great singing it live. I was like, that was something I was really excited for. Because you, um, you never know. They might- I wish it had an English name so I could share the name. You never know. They might blow up because like Jaluka has been around for a long time and they just started blowing up out of nowhere. 
Like they're coming on everybody's radar on YouTube and stuff. And they better. I genuinely, I think they're so viral, not even because their music, just because Senna's super great. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone knows Senna. Yeah. It's just, it's so. I think, <laughs> what was the song that really got him going on YouTube? It got, uh, there's this, another YouTuber called Nick Nocturnal, and he's like, does a lot of metal videos and stuff. And it came on his radar and it just went from there. I think. Venom was really popular on YouTube. Yeah. Venom was, a but I don't know if that's the first thing that was popular. Yeah, but... I don't know. They're another one that like they popped up on my like Spotify radio like two years ago, and I was like, love it. Put them in the playlist. It makes sense because they're very they're very on that metalcore, but they have a lot of deathcore and a lot of they have like all different kinds of genres. But going back to the last rock star, so you went to the concert, saw Bandmate for the first time. And then you saw The Last Rock Stars, which came out afterwards. Tell us about that. Because yes. you said you're a huge fan of... Are you a huge fan of that band? Were you a huge fan of each individual member before that? Yeah. So, like, I... When The Last Rock Stars was announced, like, as, like, the project group that it is, um, I was like, how is this even real? Like, how is this happening? <laughs> like, in my generation, they're coming to perform here in my generation. And like, I, I remember trying to explain to my dad, I was like, you don't understand how big a deal this is. This is like, if we had, and then I just like picked like random people from, from bands he would, he would go up, be like, this is, this is Axl Rose performing mm -hmm. with like Prince. Like it's like, yeah. completely different genre. So that doesn't actually work. But I was like random people from random bands that are all like a huge impact in their own way. Um, Cause like, oh my god, the lore. So, like I have to explain who Yoshiki is every single time I talk about them. Yeah, of course. All right. Cool. So like Yoshiki, of course, the leader of the Last Rock Stars, slash the drummer for the Last Rock Stars, is also the leader and drummer for X Japan. Yep. And any VK fan will tell you that X Japan is the like founding father band of VK. Um, they are the band that coined the term Visual Shock K, mm -hmm. which is later became the genre of VK. Um, so like, obviously like the impact is undeniable on the, the genre as a whole. So like, if you know VK, you've heard of X Japan, you know who Yoshiki is, whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh. And then of course, Hyde, the vocalist um, from Bakanshiel, another huge impact in the VK world. I think probably one of if not the like most famous like rock star in Japan, mm -hmm. um, like he's such a huge deal. Like the again impact is just undeniable, and that's also someone. I think he got started in the late '80s. X Japan was early '80s, and they're still going as rock icons. Yep. Um, and Buck and Shiel was also more of that like symphonic metal kind of genre that we were talking about before, um, whereas X Japan. It's definitely more of the power metal side that you were talking about. Yep. Um, and then Miyavi, although he wasn't really like in a VK band, he's really just been Miyavi for all of his career. Um, the style is like kind of hand in hand with what everyone else was doing, even if it's not specifically VK. Like I wouldn't really call Miyavi a VK artist because I don't think any of the like music he makes really fits into that genre and i don't think his image is really bk either he's always just been like straight rock star you know he's been but we out of the group i love miyavi he's such an excellent miyavi's just really cool yeah <laughs> like, he's, just, he's, he's really cool which is why during the show i specifically stood where i knew miyavi would be in front of me so the whole <laughs> yeah uh, As a, I was like, I want to be specifically right here. So I have Miyavi right here and Hyde right here. Yeah. But that was also kind of for the benefit of my friend who I dragged to the show with me because I knew she would like Miyavi, even though she knew nothing about them before the show. I was like, you're going to enjoy it. I'll tell you the lore later. Um, but I I myself am actually a huge fan of Sugi's album. <laughs> so it kind of sucked that he was on the opposite side of the stage oh. the whole time. Um, because I don't know. I just think he's really cool. I think he's a really cool guy. Mm -hmm. I don't even actually listen to that much lunacy music. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoy like guitarists that can do 
their own music with no vocals and it just speaks for them for itself like mm -hmm. like Miyavi obviously he is a great guitar player um and he's a great singer as well um but I feel like Sugizo's like standalone like instrumental music is like just so cool <laughs> yeah. and also because he plays violin and I love that element of like when rock musicians just throw in like a classical instrument yeah it's awesome it's i think i love Incredible. That. especially when uh they use like traditional japanese instruments too i've heard in some songs i know hanabi yeah does. like um uh Waga wagaki band yeah the whole band of course is traditional japanese instruments that's what wagaki is like that is a band that like if they for some reason go on to tour like that is a show that would be like on my like bucket list to go to to see wagaki band because like specifically uh Benny, the shamisen player, like, oh my god, she's insane! Like, <laughs> how do you shred on the shamisen? <laughs> like, I always love the flute player because he rocks out so hard on a flute. Yes. <laughs> like, oh my god, how do you go so crazy on a wind instrument? Like, <laughs> yeah. Wakaki just, oh my god, totally separate than <laughs> PK and everything we're talking about. But like, like I said, I just love music. <laughs> yeah. With, with like. The last rock stars, you put up a video and I saw Miyavi climbing on a speaker. I, I thought he was going to fall off. <laughs> was like, the oh. fact that he dragged like the giant mic stand with him is what really sold it for me. <laughs> yeah. Like it wasn't even like the, the like singular piece mic stand. It was the one that had like the extension for like his whatever. Yeah. And like Oops. that was during the encore performance of oh. the last rock stars. And there was so much happening. Because Hyde was on Yoshiki's drum set. Yoshiki was in the crowd. Mm -hmm. I don't know where Sugizo was. And Miyavi's on top of the speaker. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what's happening. but <laughs> It looked like hell of a show. How did that concert compare to all the other concerts? It was... It's up there. But... Sims. There, I feel like there's, there's a little bit of a, like a, a distinction between the types of bands that I see live. Mm -hmm. There's some that have like they're there and they do the show and they like follow their script and then there's some that are like super interactive with their audience. Yes. Um so I feel like sometimes I have to like distinguish the two when I'm talking about which had better shows cuz some only do so much, but um Last Rockstar is like the energy was definitely like, way up there even though there wasn't a ton of like fan interaction um and like going i say like off script but like yeah um but the actual like performances and the energy that they brought as well as the audience brought super high and i think it's because there was i mean like i said these are like rock stars starting from as early as the 80s so we had like you know, three generations of fans in the audience, basically. Yep. And everyone was excited to see them because it's like, when are we seeing this group of people again? When are we seeing any of these people yeah. solo with a group at all? Like, that's how it was for me. And like, I know, like, when I was telling my friend about it. Oh, no, you froze. Well, no, I'm getting Wait, one mm -hmm. second. Repeat that again. You like froze for a good like three seconds. You said when I was telling my friend about it. That's where you left off. I'm back. Yeah. You okay. When I was telling my friend about the show, um, she's not really into any of the kind of genres that I'm into, but she's very much like a I'll roll along for the ride type of person. Yeah. Um, so like I looked up the set list beforehand because I'm like a I want to know exactly what I'm getting into. <laughs> um like I want to be excited for the sh for the songs I want to be excited for. I want to know when I should have my phone out to record. Um, so I told her specifically, I was like, "There's two songs back to back that I will be losing my mind for," um, which was "Born to Be Free," which is probably my favorite X Japan song, okay. and then "Honey" from Lark and Shiel, which is I probably their most iconic song. I can't imagine there's anyone that doesn't know "Honey" in the the VK scene. Um, and it was Honey followed by Born to be Free, I think. Wow. 
So they hate you. Like no break in between. And I was just like energy at 140 percent like the entire crowd singing every single word there was there was pyrotechnics i'm close enough that i'm feeling the heat from the pyro like i'm in there i'm losing my mind um and it was it was really everything i could have wanted it to be truly like (laughs) it was it was incredible and like getting to see extra pants songs luck and shale songs miyabi songs skin songs like they like it was crazy so they played like all their other songs uh from their respected groups right they like pretty much covered those ones that they did even though they're in the you know yeah because the only song they had as the last rock stars was the last rock stars yeah they released one song that's and then they yeah. performed a few unreleased songs that they were going to be releasing later as a group, um, like Psycho Love, which they just released. Mm. Um, I was supposed to go see them two weeks ago, and then they canceled the show, unfortunately. Uh. Uh, but I I believe that was due to Heath's passing. So, I mean, it's, it is what it is. That's right. Uh, that just happened, too. That We talked about it on the podcast. That's very sad. Very sad when you... Yeah, and there's been a lot of that recently like oh my god of course Atsushi Sakurai was devastating for me as a Bucktick fan um that that was pretty sad and then Heath happened what not even not even a week later even I don't think yeah it was it was super close together and then I I do believe that his funeral was actually like the day that our concert was supposed to be, which is why they canceled it. Uh, um, yeah. And I doubt anyone would want to go from a funeral to like a 17 hour flight to LA to come perform at a show. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Yeah, exactly. Is what it is. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm sure they'll make it up. Um, also, like right after the rock stars had came here to the US, Yoshiki came back, did the orchestra thing, the Requiem tour. And you went to that one? Yeah, so I actually saw Goshiki three times this year. So The Last Rock Stars was in February. And then he came back in May for a interview at the Grammy Museum. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was able to go to that, which was super cool because it was like, I don't know, like 100 people. Yeah. And we just got to be in this little theater at the Grammy Museum. And he did an interview, um, did some fan Q&A, and then some performances. Um, so I had seen him then and that's actually when he announced his classical tour uh, and I was so excited because his performance in LA was actually at my birthday um, so I was like wow I have plans for my birthday already that's awesome um, two years in a row I get a concert from one of my favorite artists on my birthday like that's insane because last year I got to see one okay rock on my birthday <laughs> oh nice so I was like oh my god back to back I'm so lucky um Classical concert, it's it's not really something that I ever saw myself going to if it was not Yoshiki. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yoshiki got you there. Yeah, because he, although he is like a rock star, obviously, um, he started with being a classical composer first. Mm-hmm. Um, he's even talked about how when he writes music, he writes scores. He doesn't write music like most of the modern industry he will write it out uh, on his piano first um and so when he announced the show i was like hell yeah i'm going i'm gonna know the songs anyway it doesn't matter if they're on a piano <laughs> like there's there's it'll a, be a great time there's another band uh love bites uh miyako she does something very similar she plays piano really well and she started doing the same thing that uh yoshiki's doing like doing like some of those p- piano recitals mm-hmm. Um, I think writing from that perspective is really good. It it makes some of the best rock songs. There's a lot of like hit rock songs and stuff that were even on the radio like in early '90s. You'd be surprised how much like piano and keyboards are like in the actual song in the back that were like used to write the song. You know, um, you took a clip of "Endless Rain," which is my favorite Extra Pan song. So I absolutely love that you filmed that part. I could hear the emotion through the camera. That was wild. I was just curious, how was the crowd when that was going on? I would probably would have been in tears. <laughs> Endless Rain, it does kind of make me want to cry every time I hear it. Yeah. Um, 
I love Endless Rain as well. It's it's definitely one of the most iconic X Japan songs again. Um, and again, I've heard it three times this year, so that's sick. Because Last Rockstars performed it, he performed at the Grammy Museum, and then again at his own um, classical show. How do those and... compare? How do they compare having those two? two? I'm sorry, what was that? Like you had Endless Rain, the orchestra version, then you had the Last Rockstars. Like, how did those two versions like? match up oh well even at the last rock stars um i'm trying to remember if i don't even think they had hide sing any of it i'm pretty sure it was lyrics on screen um house lights off everyone with their flashlights up and just the crowd singing it oh wow okay so it was very um again kind of made me want to cry (laughs) Uh, cause I'm pretty sure every single time I've seen it, it's just Yoshiki with his piano mm-hmm. and the crowd sings it. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever heard it with a vocalist. Um, and with the full orchestra at his solo performance, it was already like, I was like levitating. Like I was like, I'm ascending to another realm right now. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, it's incredible every time I hear it. It's just an amazing song. Yeah. Um, wouldn't change it. Keep it on the set list. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So a couple other bands that you've seen that very popular on this channel. I didn't really that this is one of those bands that I wish I hope they come back and they fix their sound because I, I think the live sound was a little brutal on the bass end. But I, I absolutely love this band. It's one of my favorite bands, Nemophila. How did you discover Nemophila and and go see them? Because they were doing their shows all solo. Yeah, so Nemophila, um, this is going to make me sound a little bit fake, but <laughs> I just follow like Japanese tour announcements uh-huh. um, because I'm always looking for more concert experiences, more music to get into. Um, and there was like a blog that would just like update VK or J rock bands that were coming to America. Um, and I had seen Nemophila on there probably in like, I don't know. I, I know they performed in, in March, so I must have seen it in like December or something. Okay. Uh, and I was like, oh, let me check them out, see what it is. And I was like, all female metalcore band? Hold on. I was like, I can get into this. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so I listened to like their entire discography while I was at work. And I was like, this is kind of crazy. Hold on. <laughs> I was like, I have to go. Like, this is going to be so sick. Um, it was actually at the same venue that I saw Sim at as well. So I was like, should be fun. Well, um, after you have explained your music taste, it makes sense so much why Enten is your favorite song now. <laughs> I was, yeah. Now I totally get it. Enten was the one that like really stuck out for me when I was listening to it. And like, Again, I will just like listen to everything a band has released and forget to even save songs that I like, but I saved N10, which is how you know it was like, I really liked it. Ah, okay. Um, and then I don't think there was a set list out for them. I don't, I don't remember, but I knew they would have to perform it because they didn't have that many songs. Yeah. Was- um, so Go ahead. that was great. I don't remember what else was like a, like a really heavy standout during the concert. I think... Night Flight wasn't released yet, but they performed it. And I thought that was really cute because yeah. I was like, oh, this is so different from like the entire rest of the show. Yeah. Um, just Dancing. good energy, cute song. Um, at my show, at least, the vocals were pretty low. Mm. Um, I think that it might just be that venue, though. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, they were having quite a bit of sound issues throughout the tour is from what I heard at mine. It was just really heavy in the bass to where it was really distorting everything. Uh, mm. But then there's some people that did get a good experience. I think it was in New York, but, uh, but it was a lot of, a lot of that. I hope they get like a designated sound guy, you know, like these other bands do. And I think they'll be able to get it figured out. It's kind of like when you saw Acme and their sound was kind of like a little weird. It's because th- these bands that are a little bit lower, they, have to do the sound themselves or they have to rely on 
the sound guy that's hired for that gig. And some of these sound guys yeah. that show up at the gig don't really care. They're getting paid like a hundred bucks for the night and they're just they're just setting it up and walking away, you know? So Yeah, I know the first time I saw Acme, like the the venue we were at is actually one of the rooms at a club. So <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. You did get a pick from Hazuki, which was cool. You ended up getting one uh pick up that show. Yeah, I actually hold on, I have it right here actually. I conveniently have my guitar fix sitting on my coffee table. Um, <laughs> where's my camera? Here it is. Do you play guitar? I do not. I just have the ones I've gotten from shows. Ah, okay. Awesome. Yep. Cute. Azuki. And it's so funny because someone had gotten her first pick like halfway through the show. Um, and in my mind, I was like, hmm. And I looked at my friend that I was there with and I was like, I'm getting the next pick. I like said it out loud. I was like, I'm getting the next pick. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just glad to like speak it into existence. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was it was right after the encore. So I think they just did Oidon. Yeah. I believe because it was it was right at the end of the show. Um, and I where I was standing was I was like the second person from the stage, but I was right in front of Hasuki. Yeah. Um, and while I was like cheering or whatever, and like I was like waving at her, and then like she like made eye contact with me, and I was just like, and she gave me the pick, and I was like, there we go. I said it would happen, and it did. <laughs> That's awesome. You just went like that, and she's like put in your. No, seriously, I was waving so like cool. this, and then I just went like this, and she put the pick in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, it's what I deserved, and I think it helps. Um, that I am someone with a lot of energy at shows mm -hmm. and there was other people like in the front that were into it. But when I looked around, a lot of the people just weren't moving. Mm. And I feel like, again, it might be a, a demographic thing because almost everyone else there was a older guy. Mm. Um, I would say I was probably one of two people that looked like me there. <laughs> um but like it, every it, single song whether i know it or not i'm moving yeah i'm jumping i'm head banging my hands in the air something like i'm having a good time yeah i feel you on that because my first nema phyllis show i was like i was wanted the mosh and nobody was having it but, you know respect to them you know some people <laughs> i'm like ah oh, this is so heavy i want to go heavy <laughs> i was expecting a pit for them and no one was moving yeah i was like this seems like a band that you would want to be moving for i agree but uh yeah so you know i was just thing. doing my own thing in my little space <laughs> having a great time if i was there with you i'd be like all right two person pit let's go yeah just start elbowing each other <laughs> just rock it back and forth uh, might as well <laughs> we work with what we have Right. I saw him at the whiskey go go first and that was awesome that was a really good concert oh, the sound was perfect I've only been to one show at the Whiskey, but that's so funny. That's actually where my other pick is from. Um, but I don't want to talk about that band. Uh, okay. so, <laughs> oh, no. Just kidding. Gonna... <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'll tell you after. Okay, tell me after. <laughs> um, but when I was there, that... <laughs> uh oh. That's the one thing I don't want to talk about. Is that... That's so funny that you bring up that, like, that venue. I, that venue has great sound, really though. Good at That's... finding the thing that people don't want to talk about for some. Anyway. It's it's so it's not even a Japanese band, so it's like not even relevant. Okay. Uh, yeah. That venue has great sound, though, and I remember I was I had a table in the balcony because I did not want to mosh at that particular show, but I was like, oh, this is great. I'm like, this is the VIP concert experience. Yeah, they don't allow moshing there. I, I've learned so, uh, now that I'm saying this out loud. I'm like, oh, I should have known. They they wouldn't. I put my friend on my back. She was behind me, like, oh, let's do it. Like, here, get on my back, and then I put her up so she could see them because she's short. And oh. everyone was like, I got yelled at. I almost got kicked out, and then I almost. Oh, people were crowd surfing and doing all kinds of stuff at the show I was what? at. Oh yeah. Yeah, people were crowd surfing onto the stage and then jumping back off. And then I got in trouble by a friend for headbanging, and I was like, oh, this is... Okay, I'm like, all right, I'll just stay still then. <laughs> like, I don't know what else... For headbanging? Yes! Well, I, to, to be fair, to be fair, this was a while back. This is when I used to drink, so I probably was going a little hard. <laughs> it's going just a little bit hard. 
That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I, I don't drink anymore. I, I've been sober for about a year and a half. But now when I go to concerts, I mosh respectively. So I probably was being a little obnoxious, <laughs> to be fair. <clears throat> I don't know if I'd take that risk of having like more than one drink before a show and getting in the pit. I'd probably break my ankle because I usually wear uh, I wear like five inch platforms to shows mm -hmm. usually. Um, and I've been successful so far with not tripping in any pits. Yeah. But like, if I had more than one drink, I feel like I'm eating shit in the middle of the floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, what did I, I forgot what I was going to say. I just drew a blank. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So it happened. You saw, you saw Nemophila. Did When you walked away from that concert, do you still listen to him today? Or are you kind of just like have your couple favorites and... That's pretty they cool. they definitely they're still in the playlist like i'm not going to skip the songs that i like if they come up um i haven't i don't think i've heard anything recent they're, i don't know if they've released anything they will be soon a new album is coming out soon i'm very very excited for that to hear what they do i love their original music they do a lot of covers too but i love their yeah they had a whole section of covers at the concert and i was like i get it you only have so much music <laughs> and like i like i like an instrumental cover I like people that are good at playing instruments. Oh, wait, they did do the instrumental cover. What, what did they do live? Uh, they did Iron Maiden. They did um, a mashup of a couple that, other songs that I cannot remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I think that mashup was actually original music, but I can't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen it. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe it was a combination. Let me know in the comments, chat. I don't remember. It's been a while. Uh, so you were talking about when you were younger that you got into – j-rock and everything right. middle school right as early as it started yeah and then it started off with k-rock so you mentioned baby metal was one of the mm -hmm. groups that you got into in middle school um tell me about that how did that happen how did you discover baby metal in middle school? so like genuinely it was just when gimme chocolate got released and just was super viral mm -hmm. um what and like it was on what was the the, you know that like reaction channel that like did like the like kids react and stuff like that mm -hmm. they put baby metal on there oh. and i watched it and i was like this is fire i'm gonna go listen to everything else they have yeah it, so you got into because of gimme chocolate going viral and then that kids react that's and it, do you still listen to them now or are you oh yeah yeah like they're another band that like i don't i don't follow super heavy but like um, if I come across their music, I'm going to listen to it. I've always enjoyed the music they have, even if I don't like seek it out. Yeah. Um, and then like when I saw the tour announcement, I was like, oh, I have to be there. Obviously. Like <laughs> it's, it's going to be great. And you saw, um, where did you see them? I saw them at the YouTube theater in LA with, um, death clock. Nice. What did, what did you think? So back to what I said about like bands that are like allowed to interact with their audience versus kind of have a scripted yeah. situation. I feel like baby metal is one of those groups that like they kind of have their set routine for the show. So like, that's what they're going to do. You know, there's not a whole lot of running around, changing things up, which is fine. Cause like I said, I was heavy into K-pop and all they do is choreograph routines. So it was a kind of similar experience to that. Um, where, like, I still had a great time because I love the songs they're doing. They still brought great energy. Um, obviously, like, Sue Metal sounded great. You could tell her mic was on. Yeah. Um, but I also saw them from the balcony, though. So, like, I feel like I would have had a lot of fun in the pit. Yeah. For them specifically. But I couldn't because I was getting a tattoo, like, two days beforehand. And I was like, I can't yeah. be in the pit. <laughs> that's, that's what's... I'm a huge baby metal fan mainly because it, again it touches on the metal i really enjoy i was, I was a big new metal fan so like basically mm -hmm. a lot of new metal elements to it and i love their heavier stuff i really do like all the heavier songs and the new one's really good i have the one with the uh, rage against the machine they have the guitars um play with uh melody and it's pretty good i'm curious to see what they do with the new album um and what they're going to come out with later on well, that's cool. So you were able to, what did you think of the whole mix up between death clock and baby metal? Um, could be controversial, couldn't be controversial here. Um, Oh yeah. It's, I was, group, yeah. I 
didn't even watch half of Death Clock set. I was in the lobby. Uh, I went to buy merch as soon as they came out. Oh, so you- and then I came back and I was like, no, and I left again. <laughs> you were fortunate enough to see Babe Metal first and then Death Clock. I had to stay for Death Clock. And see the babe metal. Okay, but that's so funny because I only saw that they were opening like hours before the show. And then if I didn't text my friend that they were opening, she literally was going to miss their performance because she didn't know and was going to show up afterwards. And I was like, Oh, that would have sucked. I just saw from the email. And then apparently there was also another opener that I didn't even know about. So I didn't see him either. Yeah. Um, Richardson, Jason Richardson. He's a really good guitarist, but it didn't make sense to me why he was there. He was literally a guy just shredding on guitar with the backing tracks. And that was that was it. Great guitar, so phenomenal guitars. I just don't understand why there's not a band. Maybe it was save money or something. I just it was weird. But I didn't even know that like it was happening. Um, so I didn't even show up in time for it. And I was like, okay, cool. I saw the time baby metal was supposed to be on. I was like, that's when I'm showing up, I guess. Yeah. Which I don't usually do. I'm usually like a I will go watch the whole thing. Mm. But sorry guys, my camera froze. We're back. <laughs> So we're talking about Baby Metal, the Death Clock concert. Didn't know that there was other members. Um, yeah, it, you were talking about it being a controversy. It was, it's pretty controversial uh, in our group or er, when we talk about it, too. I don't agree with Death Clock being there with Baby Metal just because of the fan base that Baby Metal attracts compared to what Death Clock attracts and then what Death Clock actually showed on the screen. I don't know if they made it apparent to other people of what they do. So a lot of people are probably assuming that Death Clock was going to be doing similar music to Baby Metal. Because a lot of Baby Metal fans did not know who Death Clock was. Like straight up. Yeah. You you have to research. And if you don't know who Death Clock is, then you you got a cartoon surprise, (laughs) you know, when you were at that concert. Um, yeah, because all I looked up was like I like I said like I'll look up set lists or whatever, and I'll usually just look up set lists on Spotify if someone's made one already, so I can just listen through and see if there's anything that I'm interested in. Yeah, and I was like, so I listened to a little bit of their music, and I was like, it's fine, but I'm like not thrilled about it. Yeah, and then when I try and look up who is this band, I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? Am I allowed to curse? I never even asked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they're from a, a cartoon show from uh, called Metal Op- Met- Metalocalypse. I guess. Yeah. And it came out in like the 90s, I think. It's a big thing with metalheads. Metalheads absolutely love it. Um, well, older metalheads, I should say. Um, I was lost. <laughs> yeah. And so if you don't know the cartoon, you probably aren't going to be too familiar with the music. So I think you had to know about the cartoon to really probably enjoy it. Because other than that, to me, it just sounds like... <laughs> the entire time and yeah really fast and then like even when i like went back to like watch some of their performance like the the like focus was on like the amv or whatever like you couldn't actually see the real life band because the lights were off on stage yeah so i'm like i feel like that just takes away from the whole point of seeing music live yeah so like i was just like super whatever on the whole thing and i agree that like that seems like a weird um, theme to have at a baby metal concert. Yeah. Like it's, I don't really think that that goes together either. Like if they were just performing the music, maybe, maybe, but like even then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was whatever on it. It's one of those. Uh, yeah. But luckily you got the leave. <laughs> I, I got. I was, I was up front and was completely blinded because the strobe lights was so much. I literally had yeah. my eyes because I, I literally felt sick at certain points. I'm like, wow, they're, they're trying to give people epileptic seizures right now. It was really bad. Even from where I was sitting, like in the balcony, the lights were really, really bad. Yeah. I wonder why. Yeah, this it is just insane. I, it didn't affect me in New York. In New York, I handled it just fine. But in um i think it was nebraska i saw it and it was i was up front i was like i wanted to have an experience up front to see baby metal like i'll go up front see if it's good because i remember when i saw it in new york i'm like oh it's okay it's whatever it's a cartoon it got boring after a while um and then i was like i gotta see baby metal up front at least once so i did that and i regret it because i got blinded so (laughs) but but yeah but like in terms of like the actual like concert experience 
if we're talking about like baby metal alone, on, I feel like it's like the exact opposite to how like my sim concert experience was. Uh, <laughs> like where like I'm I'm not only am I in there, like I am front and center in the middle of the pit. Everyone is moving. Mm-hmm. Ma obviously like really interacts with his audience. Uh, I don't know how it was when they were an opener, but for us, uh, it was also a pretty small venue. It's the same place I saw at Nemophila, so smaller venue, um, but it was a sold out show. So like the actual floor was pretty packed, mm-hmm. um, and like everyone was moving. Like not a single person was standing still for that entire show, which is like my ideal experience. Like it was so fun. Um, I so many bruises. <laughs> so many <laughs> I mean, like that was like the most violent show i've ever been at it was so fun um and like it just like that experience is for me preferred to like a kind of choreographed situation but i understand that that's just like what baby metal does and like i can appreciate it for for baby metal but like for other shows i would prefer a little more a little bit more interaction yeah a little more freedom yeah yeah they have like segments where they can like they just do like the waving thing which is like kind of typical for a group set do that right they have that yeah that. it's a little more of the the idol group kind of standard mm-hmm. yeah that's true but you're absolutely right sim was amazing i when i saw them the two bands before them were they were great but when sim got on it was like they controlled the crowd they really did it, they didn't they did a fantastic job with it all right yeah. well um, Jinx, I really appreciate you joining me. If there's anything you want to let the audience know, uh, follow you on Instagram, I'm assuming. You know, check her out over there. Um, I mean, check check out the Instagram over there. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I messed You're good. Ah! Um, but anyways, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. This was super cool. I love music and talking about music and talking about concerts and everything. Um, so yeah, thank you for inviting me. Um, if sure. for some reason you want to see me post about all the concerts I go to or play dress up at conventions. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at baby bat bitch. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. For the I, right? Yes. Yeah. Baby bat B X T C H. It's right here guys. If um, you want to follow her there and if you're listening on Spotify or Apple music, any of those, make sure you uh, drop us a comment on YouTube. Um, let us know what you think of this podcast and you can also see her links to her channel stuff if you want to follow it there. All right, guys. See you all in the next one. See you. Yay. All right. Thank you so much for doing this. Sorry for all the weird technical difficulties. I almost messed up and I messed up at the end. I was like, don't worry. It's fine.